Well, obviously, trying to make the classes electives are going to make it much harder for students to take the classes because of the amount of credits that we need to fill with our core classes. We're not going to have space to take elective classes, even if we wanted to. So why not just listen to what the students want? If that's your well, I think we are listening. Um, as I say, we're listening to a very wide range of opinions. But well, we should be the most important opinion. It's our education. Well, but it's also true that most high school students in the district never choose to take an MAS course. In fact, most Latino students in our high school... But I'm pretty sure Ms. Federico said that our classes are on student demand. She has over 44 students in her classes due to demand by the students. Well, I, I'm relying on data which staff has provided us, and if it's not correct, it should be corrected. But according to the data that we have about exact enrollments, um, fewer than half of the Latino students in our high schools choose to take these courses. Um, so there's, not everyone wants to take these courses. But there are students who do want to take these courses. Not right. everyone wants to take regular history or regular English or regular government, and they're forced into those classes. Well, we do. The state does require a standard core, and that core should provide adequate treatment of all the things which the state wants, which the state wants in the social studies core, and it should provide much better treatment of the perspectives of different ethnic groups in this region, and not just Mexican Americans, but Native Americans. Um, that's been very, uh, very, very deficient. In but our classes do cover the core credits, and bringing in auditors to see if this is true doesn't really suffice, and those auditors work for the state who are trying to dismantle the program, so obviously their findings are going to be biased. And not only that, but I've talked to auditors, and they had a sit-down conversation with students. It was supposed to be five students that were in the Mexican-American Studies program and five who weren't, and there was only four of us that were in the Mexican... Actually, there was only three of us were in the program, so from that evidence alone, the auditors aren't doing their job pro properly, and I don't feel like their findings are going to be unbiased. I feel like it is going to be biased, and I just think that we should, when you have other states around the nation praising your teachers in your district, you should be doing the same thing, not trying to change the classes, not trying to make the classes elective. You should be praising them for the job that they're doing already. Well, part of your statement, I think, buttresses my approach. I don't, we didn't hire the auditors. I don't necessarily have any confidence in what they're going to find. I don't have any confidence in what the state's going to recommend on the basis of those findings. So why and that's just wait until the audit is completed before you uh, propose your resolution. Because I would rather do something that I think actually does make sense for the program or in teaching rather than waiting for the state to come in and make demands um, with a very powerful threat, which then will probably force the board to capitulate. I think we're in a stronger bargaining position. We're in a stronger bargaining position if we take some action that we think makes sense now, and then we can say the state should let us uh, pursue this avenue for several years. But, but why do you think she believes that you're trying to kill the program altogether? Um, She's I, a student. Yes. Why I, does she believe that your, that your motive is to end the program altogether. Well, I, I think that she's the best one to answer that question. I have so not... why do you believe that he wants to end the program altogether when he's it's... telling you that he's trying to preserve the program? Because that's not true. If you're trying to preserve something, you keep it the way that it is and you don't change it. And to compromise with a guy who doesn't know what his what his stance is, to try to compromise with what he thinks Hoopenthal wants, that isn't a very good move that's either. Not what I'm doing. You said you don't know what Hoopenthal's stance is and you think that this is the best way to compromise with what he wants before you find out. You... No, what I, I said is not this is the best way to compromise. I said this is a way to do something that I think makes sense for the district. I mean, reasonable people may disagree about that, but I think that this reform makes sense for the district. And I would rather have done this, and then whatever he wants, be able to say, this is how we think we can move forward and improve student achievement. So it's not a compromise with any position, and we don't know what his position is. This is something that's homegrown, which I believe in, which other members of the board may or may not believe in. But Hoopenthal ran his campaign on the promise that he would end ethnic studies. So how is it that you you're not quite aware of his stance on wanting to end this program. Oh, I know what he said during the campaign, but I think it's relevant that he has said nothing of like that since he came into office. So you're no, saying he changed his mind? No, I simply, I'm simply 